So we're concentrating on looking at normal data. I talked a lot about normal data. But then there's this question, what if the data is not normal? And that's, well, that's an interesting question, and lots of opinions fly around about this. And yet there are tests that you can do for the probability, testing the probability that um, your data set fits a particular distribution, in this case, the normal distribution. But even these are only indicative, and you, you know, be really careful about They're not a formula for telling you what test to use. They just simply inform um, your decisions that you have to make about how to analyze the data. They, they aren't prescriptive in any way, and that is the problem as we move on with much of this work. It really isn't prescriptive. Uh, and I know that some people, when they come in, because it's a maths-based subject, struggle with this idea that it's not prescriptive. Um, but it's because there's an awful lot of things at play, and, and, and the assumptions that underlie all of this uh, tend to break down anyway. So what I was just going to do, we've got a little bit of time left. Uh, I'm sure you're um, very fatigued at this stage. But I wanted to go back and we'll just look at these tests of normality. They're fairly easy to, de to demonstrate in SPSS. Uh, what, so if you go back to that data set, um, one of the things I need to do first, uh, I did this last week, is filter the data. So I need to look at only one of my groups, either Republic Troopers or um, Imperial Stormtroopers. Uh, so I'm going to say look at the Imperial Stormtroopers, because they're the ones, the more recent measurements. So if I go to the data menu and select cases, I'm going to set a condition. So the condition for inclusion into, into this uh, normality test. But I don't want to test both sets together. I only want to test whether the individual data sets are normal. Because if I combine them, um, they probably won't be normal if they're different. So my condition, if this condition is satisfied, so I press on if, and all I do is select the republic or imperial variable, the type variable. So if the type is equal to one, remember one is uh, an imperial stormtrooper. Now press continue, and then I'll just press OK. You'll see that down here I've got a filter column that tells me that none of these Republic clone troopers have been selected. If I look down, all of the Imperial stormtroopers have now been selected. Or it might have a 1, depending if you press this value labels button. And now, the, all we do, analyze descriptive statistics, explore, so this just helps explore the data. And now I want to explore, let's say, weights. Because uh, that's, weight is where I observe the difference. I'll just put that in the dependent list. And if I press OK, spits out a whole load of data, it yeah, spits out a whole load of graphs, it should also give me, oh, I oh know what I forgot to do actually, I'll go back to that, under statistics, oh, that's okay, under plot, uh, plots, here we go, so I'm going to take off some of those plots, but I, I want the norma normality plots with tests. Okay, so that was under the plots button, under explore. Normality plots with tests. When I press OK, here we go, I get tests of normality. And so I can have this uh, unpronounceable test, or Shapiro Wilk. And the thing to look at here is the significance. So that's just a p-value. So what's that telling you? That's the probability that... Um, there is no difference between the distribution of my data and a normal distribution. As here it's saying it's a p of 0.2. The Shapiro-Wilk test 
gives higher p-values even more confident that the um, that my data is normally distributed. And so even by seeing those differences, you start to see that these these tests again take it with a pinch of salt. Um, it can inform it can inform your understanding of the data and helps you to build a picture of what you're looking at, but it is not prescript prescriptive. And you don't just choose the test that gives you the best value, or gives you the answer you want. Um, most often in the literature, I think, you'll tend to find this test because it's quite intuitive. If you look at how it works, it, it's quite an intuitive test. This one is a much more mathematically um, involved test. So, I haven't confused you with that. I was, just wanted to go on and do one final, one final thing. So, data's not normal, or might not be normal, possibly. Okay, you can actually you can run through this uh, yourself. You see, on on the website there is this this data file, characteristics of clonal stormtroopers, and it is less than twenty. So what I've I've done there is. A taken a, a sample of data from the, the first, a subset of the data from the first file. And I've, I've repeated what I just did, um, these tests of normality, to the different sample sizes. And you can see that now this test is starting to, or well both these tests are starting, um, when I have low sample numbers, starting to suggest that the data is not normally distributed. If we set our significance level as 0.5, they, they're still not enough to reject the null hypothesis um, that they're normal. But you can see that the p-value is much smaller than it is here. And so it's beginning to indicate that there is a departure from normality in the data, which may tell us, for low sample numbers, that we would like to use a different kind of test uh, to examine our data. And these tests are called non-parametric tests. They just do not assume the normal, distribu uh, normal distribution. And so the very final activity, I believe, is to, instead of using a t-test for the comparison of our data, is to use the Mann-Whitney new test. It's very similar to the t-test, it just doesn't make the assumption of normality. And it compares the relative positions of values within the data. So are, are, are the values greater or less than? Or t do they tend to be greater in one, one of the samples, say Republic, um, than in the other, say the Imperial? But if we do this in SPSS, it, it, it just... Writes, it reads it all out in a very human readable form. So if I go back to my data, um, I think I need to clear my filter. So I just right click on the column and press clear to get rid of the filter. And now if I want, I can, I can go down, there's this thing called non parametric tests on the analyze menu. And I can look at independent samples. And it says a word that you'll probably all like. It says automatically compare distributions across groups. And so I'll go, OK. Oh, there's no filter being selected. OK, well, I'm going to select weight. And I'm going to group by the type. And when I press run, There you go. It, it tells me in human readable form the distribution of weight in kilograms is the same across categories of Republic or Imperial Trooper. It tells me the test in the independent samples Man Whitney U test and significance of 0.025. Oh. And it's some people's birthday as well. So, what should we do? We should reject the null hypothesis assuming that the significance level is 
So it kind of tells you what to do. Um, we can go back and do it again, analyze non-parametric tests, independent independent samples, and we can actually put more variables in there. Why not put job satisfaction in there as well and see what that says. Oh, actually no, because I haven't got job satisfaction for Republic, um, Republic clone troopers. Maybe we can't do that comparison. So it's just height and weight. There we go. So it gives us all the answers you could possibly wish. So it's telling us what we already determined from the, um, the t-test, that there is a difference in the weights, but there isn't a difference in the uh, heights. The p-values we have here, these p-values are different, they're not the same as the ones we got from t-tests. And so you might ask, um, well which is the better one, or which is the right value? Well there isn't a right or wrong, that's just the result that a different kind of test gives you. And we will get into discussing um, the relative merits of different tests and why you might believe one over another. But I've thrown quite a lot into today's session, so I don't think I didn't really want to get into those technical discussions just yet. Oh, here you go. So it's all, all in the slides. You can download these off the website, so you can have a look through. And you can see that there's the, um, for the low sample numbers, it also, I suppose the, the thing to look at here actually is when we get down to the low sample numbers and the t-test is showing, um, the t-test gives me p-values here, so the weight, we, it's telling me that it, it can't, it, the difference in the weights is not statistically significant for a t-test. However, actually, when we do uh, the Man Whitney U test, the difference is statistically significant. And this might be useful in generating discussion about our data, um, knowing that two different tests. I mean, this p-value, it, it's low, but here it's, uh, it's much lower. Yeah. Why believe one test over another? That is a very good question.